Hey, I'm Ollie Ferguson. I drive the number 55 Ontario Sports and Series race car uh, based out of Lindsay, Ontario. You're watching On Track Weekly. MK here on GeForce TV. It is March 25th and a beautiful day outside. Ready to get going, talk more racing. We've got an updated car on the screen for you. As yes, Ollie Ferguson's got a new looking ride for 2024. So we had to make sure we've got it updated here on it. Uh, thank you, Ollie, for being the intro driver for tonight's episode thank you very much we're also repping a couple drivers today we'll rep our image wraps uh cole camrath and andy camrath and uh repping cassie howard as well here on the show tonight so we're going to continue on our trek around ontario as we continue to look at the rosters for the 2024 racing season we did leave off with the apc uh, series last week uh, we did finish with the united racing series super stocks um, however there has been some updates since uh, that day uh, since we we last wrapped on monday last week there's been some additions made on the apc series website so we'll go over we'll take a look at the uh, the names that have been announced on their series so far we'll cross reference them with what we had uh, basically as a double check these are the names that are fully registered the thing is a lot of people do say hey i'm going to go racing this year and then stuff happens uh, and then it impacts plans uh, obviously financially is the biggest thing uh, so we're going to make sure we go through and, and talk about some of those names that have confirmed that they are indeed uh racing in 2024 uh, we'll start with the United Racing Series, and then we'll take our, our trip around some of the more uh, the touring series. Um, and uh, we'll go through some of the lists I do have on screen might be incorrect in terms of um, uh, there's more names to be added to them. Uh, but we'll try and, and go through as much as possible. If you are also confirming that you're going to be racing in 2024, just let me know in the comments, and we'll add you to the list. Uh, lots of great stuff still to come this year. Lots of question marks still to come as well. Uh, and that's the good thing about it. There are some racers who will make announcements, of course, and then others that won't. Uh, it, it might be right up to race season. And we just kind of see who shows up on the first night to confirm who will be there and who will not. As of right now, though, things are looking really good across Ontario. Lots of good fields. Uh, we're even seeing some improvements at tracks that maybe had lesser car counts last year. But I do expect that things are going to get very, very, very busy. We are essentially one month away from the start of the 2024 racing season. Practice will start, I believe we're starting, let's see, at April 27th around there. That's when a lot of practices are going to get started for the 2024 season. Uh, we are ready. Uh, I can tell you right now, uh, with the Stickers and Scuffs podcast, with On Track Weekly, we, we are ready to get going. It is time to get racing going in Ontario. So let's take a look at some of those lists. We'll first head over to the APC Series site. So if you haven't been there already, what you're going to do is you're going to go over to the United Racing Series on uh, their website. We take a quick look here. We'll just bring it down a little bit so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But... APC series, um, you can go abcseries.com, and uh, they've got a brilliant website uh, that they have a lot of details on, which is nice. Uh, gives you a lot of good stuff 
here at, uh, on the racetrack. You got your registration forms. You got all their news. You got the, the, the contingency announcements here. What's nice, a connection to how do you get to your Racing America to be able to catch the events this year? Well, they've got a link right here. You can check out past races here uh, as well. They've got their point standings. Now, this is not updated in terms of this year. This has got the 2024 standings. Well, obviously, the season hasn't started yet. But your schedule is on the right-hand side here. What I really like about this, and this is what's cool, I don't know if the standings page is working. Standing pages is working again, but look at this. You can go back and find uh, all the way to the beginning. So if you want to go and check out the standings from 2015, you can. It's got all your statistics in here. So you can go back and see Dan McHattie finished in eighth play, or had eight starts in tied with Steve Laking in points. And go all the way back and see who finished last. Uh, Junior Farley made one start all the way back in 2015. So, uh, and what's also nice as well, it got updated pictures on the page as well. Also, what I really love as well, you can go back and actually find, this is what a lot of racing series should strive for. Um, I believe the team that put this together was, uh, that this site together was the, uh, the team of uh, the Dysons and uh, Ryan and, and Jamie Dyson. And this is what I want to see with a lot of racing series is have all your statistics, have all your information. This is what we're trying to do actually with the OSS is build similarly to what they've done here because it is your one stop, especially for somebody like myself who goes back and needs to find information when I'm going to talk about something on a show. I want to go back and find it all in one place. Well, this has everything that I need. You can go all the way back, find, again, 2017 start. You can find how the finish was um, for the hot rods right from the start. You can find, uh, you can go back, let's go to APC, and let's go all the way back to the first season, and you can find one of their races. Let's go to the Great Canadian 100, and you can see how people did, how they finished, and where they qualified. Love it. Absolutely love it. I think it's awesome. Really, really cool stuff to have all your information based off of one site. You got your standings, your schedules, your news, everything that you should have right in here. Now, what they have that we're going to utilize right now is the driver's section. So the United Racing Series, they're going to take, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a look here. Now, we, we did cover APC and the Super Stocks last week. However, because there's been some additions, we're going to go through and see what the series has officially announced. My list, again, that's what people tell me. That's what has been uh, added because people have made announcements. However, it is most important that they're on the website because that is the true registrations. So let's take a look. Um, now, it can happen that registrations come in and those drivers don't actually end up racing. Like we said, stuff happens um, all the time. However, let's take a look. Oh, and this was something else. You've got your champions, but what I also really love about this is they've got an all-time stats page. So, again, racing series, do stuff like this where it says most career polls, most career top tens, uh, most career starts. Brilliant to have this type of information. All the winners in the series history. Not only that, it's got a driver archive with every driver that's participated in the United Racing Series. Amazing idea. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Like some of these... I go in here and then and then the best part about it, they've done so much work to this. So much work at all. Let's go if you could click on Lonnie Thompson, for example. Lonnie Thompson, it'll tell you the starts that he made and his average finish. Well, his average finish would be the start that he made that year. Um because I believe he only yeah, he only did one race. But uh, I mean, this is the type of commitment that you want uh you want to have this type of information on here. Um, I absolutely love this. Uh, so the team that put this together, great job. Um, they're utilizing this to a T. It looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, absolutely love it. Uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, we don't have the updated 23 information. I don't know if there was a rookie last year in this series. So um, I have to see here. Super stocks. There we go. 
uh, some legendary names right there. Bill, Connor, Trevor. I got your rookie. Idea. So again, having all this stuff, you've got your updated pictures up at the top. Love it. Absolutely love it. Nice picture of Connor Ellis's uh, 48 car right there with uh, Jordan Morris. And I think that's Darren Wright on the left-hand side there um, with the rookie of the year spot. I love it. Keep keep your fans engaged. Having you know the updated names, your series logos. This is what you want to have uh, for exposure for everybody. So we're going to take a look at the driver section, and we are going to start actually with your APC series. And let's take a look here. So the one thing you're going to have to pay attention to is that we don't have photos of the cars yet. So they're going to most of the time they'll get the photos when there starts to be practice. Um, they'll have their photographer go out and put their practice. Uh, Get the pictures up on the website but uh, here's some confirm confirmed names that we did not have um previously cole quentin coming over from the um flambro uh late models now he made i believe a couple starts last year in the apc series so he'll be in there kyle steckley ray morno jr which we already knew of sean chenoweth blair wicket jr farley and an update from from farley likely because he was at motorama so they got a beautiful shot there and then Michael Gowdy. Uh, this is an interesting spot because I uh, did not know that Michael Gowdy was going to go into the APC series. Uh, Michael previously has been in the NASCAR Canada series racing at CTMP. He's raced at Oshuiken Speedway. And now he's going to, uh, I guess, going to be, be a part of the APC series in, in 2024. So uh, great, great stuff for him. Then you go to the Quick Quick Superstock Series for 24. Not a ton of names yet. However, we do have confirmation. Nick Ramsey is back in 2024, coming back from a uh, medical issue. So uh, awesome to see Nick Ramsey coming back. Uh, Ryan Dyson, he's also confirmed for 2024 in the number 28. He'll be back. Roy Wilkie is confirmed to be back in the Quick Quick Super Sox in 2024. And then both Naggies are going to be competing for the Quick Quick Super Stock Championship in 2024. Carson Nagy winning the championship last year and Hudson Nagy winning the finale at Delaware and the finale for the Quick Quick Super Stocks. So these two are somebody, uh, these two are going to be fighting for the championship all year round. Now the big question is going to be, is the 36 still going to be in there for Lane Zardo? No idea what's going to happen with them just yet. But uh, add Sean Chenoweth to this list, and all of a sudden we've got a, a really big championship battle. And all those names I've talked about before aren't any slouch either. They're all going to be part of this. Now, we do know one name that is not going to be back in Super Stocks this year, and that's Garrett Teamersma, uh, has sold his Super Stock. So uh, he has basically announced that they're not going to be in Super Stocks this year. If he is going to be back in anything, uh, we would expect to see him in a late model, um, which, I mean, hey take the next step that you want to take like that's the next logical step move up from super stock into late models so those are where we start off with um we have our uh basic start uh oh, there's Garrett right there uh basic start to the season with it being um uh, the you know right now we've got uh, a couple of comments, and I forgot to, to get to them, so my apologies. Hands down, best website going. Yes, Calvin. Uh, OSS, we're working on catching up on that. Uh, you know, uh, I'd, I'd love to, I'd like to get a bit more uh, of that information. And for, for us, for OSS, it's been really tough because we've got a longer history um, than uh, APC right now. APC back to 2015, OSS back to 2007. And unfortunately, a lot of the information is not digitized. So. Uh, it's it's having to contact previous people within the series to see if they have notes. Um, so we'll see. I don't, I don't know uh, if that's going to uh, work out. But um, right now we have at least got some points for everyone. Uh, we've got every at least the top seven in, in every year uh, for the point standings. So we're looking at uh, the amazing team at Kilton Inc. To, to get our website up there. But I mean the... the, the APC site is what every site, NASCAR included, needs to be like. Um, you need to have that. You need to, and, and what I appreciate as well is their partners have their own section on that website as well. So let's get looking here. 
let's get looking at our Just Foam It Modifieds for 2024. Now, these are some names that I did not have on my list, um, which is good to see that we've got a couple more names here. But uh, Norman Newman, he typically runs out, uh, runs a couple of races. I don't think he normally runs the full season, but uh, Norman Newman in the number 11 also ran down south uh, this year in the Tour Style Modifieds. Uh, Brad Pearsall back in the number 15 and last year's champion under pretty odd circumstances, unfortunately. Uh, Jason King did win the championship. Uh, they were set to race the finale at Peterborough, but unfortunately at Autumn Colors, the weather was just an absolute mess. And Jason King, I believe, he blew up uh, in practice and without Brandon Feeney. Uh, not sure how that would have worked. Um, got the car out there and, and uh, luckily the weather did... Uh, uh, didn't work for them because they were able to hold on win the championship and uh, he's back for 2024 so we'll see how uh, the rest of the season will go Steve Trendell in the number 46 David Mathers in the 48 and Wally Wilson in the 69 also announcing the return of TJ Marshall in the number 75 in the just foam it modifieds now that is what we have on the official list so those are the official registered names here are some other names that I have on my list right now uh, people that have confirmed uh, at least some potential in running. Now, uh, Tyler Liscom, we did see at Motorama. That's 81 modified was there. So that would likely mean that he's going to be uh, participating. TJ Edwards has confirmed participation as well in the Just Foam at Modifieds, AJMs, and Ryan Dick on a partial season. But again, like we said before, everything can change. So that's what we have for the Just Foment modif Modifieds. But let's go and take a look at the JRS Auctions Hot Rods. You see on my list here, we've got Cole Ecker. We're going to change a little bit of this. Uh, it's going to be Steve and Cole Ecker. Cole's going to run a part-time deal. Steve Ecker is going to run the 03. He's going to be full-time in the JRS Hot Rods in 2024. Now, the name underneath is Zach Sprung. Now, Zach initially was announced as driving the 4S. That is no longer the case. Um, the 4 is going to go to Steve McCaw. Whether Zach Sprung is still going to run uh, in the Oscar, or the J JRS Oscar Hot Rods this year, I'm not sure. Um, with the with the number change, could just be that it could just be a number change. That's it, um, and he could still be running. Um, I haven't reached out to Zach for confirmation, but uh, that is uh, the case right now. That we will have Steve McCaw in the number four, uh, and that's his number that he's he really did want to uh, run this year. So. Um, good for Steve. Uh, Steve was just uh, our last guest on the Stickers and Scuffs podcast. Uh, Ryan Cowan in the Pontiac Bonneville is back in 2024. One of my favorite rides in all of Ontario. Dave Evison is also back in the number 15. Matt Spry. Now, I have it listed here as a 17 initially, but it has been confirmed. It is going to be, as you saw on the, we're going to take a look on the website, but um, the it's going to be a different number. It's going to be the 71 this year for him. Uh, Dave McMahon, Haley McNichol, Steve Arond, and I don't have the correct number there for Steve Arond. I believe it's going to be a switch. I, I honestly, I remember uh, Steve McCaw telling me which number it was. Uh, or I wish I remembered what it was, but they're going to make it uh, easy. It's going to be a split car with uh, Kara Martin this year, who's going to run the V8 stocks in Delaware. Matt Hopkins uh, in the number 44. He'll run partial season. Steve Book, Connor Ellis, and a new piece for Connor Ellis this year. Nick Clark will run partial. He's going to do a uh, majority uh, running full-time in the Ontario Late Model Association up at Varney. Jeremy McLean will have the second truck on the track this year. As we mentioned, Steve McCaw is going to be running the number four. Now, when we go to the hot rods here, Trevor Thompson is back in the double zero. Steve McCaw, as we confirmed, in the number four. And Rob Bromley is back in that number six. Uh, probably one of uh, the fastest guys in the Oscar Hot Rod series. Dave Evison has already announced. And Haley McNichol driving the number 17. Sweet Pea Truck. So Haley McNichol will be behind the wheel there. Ryan Cowan, we already talked about. Uh, Glenn Blaker. Now, I... I thought for a reason, for some reason, it was Glenn Baker last year on the website, but maybe it is Glenn Blaker. Uh, Steve Book, and there's the confirmation, 71 for Matt Spry. A uh, new look for him this year as well. He hasn't released the full look yet, but he's showing some behind-the-scene pics on how it's going. I can't wait to see more of these cars. And how about this? Kenny McNichol Jr. 
Number 77, he is going to run this year. They're doing a new build for him. So the Oscar Hot Rods are looking very, very good this year. Very stacked. And I, I honestly, I, I love this division so much. The fact that JRS Auctions has come on board, which is, uh, uh, you know, Joel and his team are a great partner of ours. Uh, can't wait. Um, can't wait to see it. Uh, it is... It's going to be fun, I really think. Uh, I think Brandon uh, Norman's got two modifieds, and that might be one of the uh, one of the two. I could be wrong, but I believe he might have two, and and that's uh, what was what is for sale. So our Oscar. Divisions are done for right now, uh, but I'm I'm expecting at least a couple more um, for sure. Uh, the hot rod division up at Sunset is also looking quite good this year. So right now, the hot rod division across the province definitely looking really good. I think we can expect to see Tyler Hahn back in the number two. Uh, maybe we'll see some Rick Spencer Walt at some of the events. Um, there is definitely a question mark. I do have about Bill Clark. I'm not sure if he's going to run it all. I know obviously Nick, uh, moving to the Ontario late model association, uh, takes one of those cars off the track. And there, of course, there's always going to be names that we don't know of, um, that are going to show up and be a pair, a, a part of things. And that's part of the fun. Um, I know of one hot rod coming to sunset and people are going to be pumped about the guy behind the wheel says Brandon Barnett. Well, that's the hope right and one of the things uh, that's very attractive about this year for the oscar hot rod series is the fact that they're going to have a combination event with the hot rods from sunset and it's going to be sunset versus oscar brilliant marketing move you could literally have a field of 30 hot rods uh turning up tuning up for uh sunset now obviously they have the bills art of memorial as well but um, I think right now, uh, having two competitive classes of hot rods, hey, it could have gone either way. Uh, last year was a little bit tougher for Sunset in terms of their regular count, and, and I think for Oscar as well. And uh, this year, very well could be a much, much bigger season, especially the lot of the, lot of the limited late model bodies uh, or limited late model chassis being available because the, the, the class doesn't really exist. Uh, I don't believe there's anyone that is running a limited late model class or division anymore. So a lot of those late limited late model bodies and uh, you can take them off and use the chassis for a hot rod. And uh, I think how good of a partner for the hot rod series is JRS Auctions. I mean, a place where you can routinely find classic cars. It's a great, great combination. Uh, Joel Robichaud and his team, uh, a perfect partnership. Uh, there for Dane, Dave Gameforth and the entire Oscar Hot Rod division. Really exciting stuff uh, for 2024. However, we're going to continue our trek along racing in Ontario and we're going to take a look at the touring divisions. And there's going to be a, a bunch of changes, I imagine, that we will see on this list. Um, there has been already... And so we're going to take a look at the uh, NASCAR Canada Series, the Ontario Sportsman Series, Can-Am Midget Series, Outlaw Midgets, Ontario Legends, Great Lakes Legends, and the Outlaw Super Late Model Series. That's who we've got on deck here. Now, we don't have a full breakdown of every uh, driver and field and what they're going to do and all this and all that. We are going to go through just who we've got in terms of registrations, or who's already uh, confirmed or announced they're going to be back. So we'll go through uh, bit by bit here, and uh, we'll take you right up to the 8 o'clock hour, and uh, we will get ready for um, episode 83, which I'm going to need some assistance probably to put together, um, or at least going to take some time to, to probably build that up a little bit. Uh, we're going to go back and we're going to do uh, Grand Bend Speedway. And we're going to take a look at uh, their division and uh, their divisions from last year. See who we have on their rosters. I don't have a lot of names 
uh, for 2024 yet uh, for who's going to be racing out at Grand Bend. Um, so we're going to have to probably pay more of attention to, to what happened last year. Um, but Grand Bend is the plan for next week here on, on Track Weekly. So let's uh, let's take our ourselves back over to the list of rosters. And we'll take a look here at the NASCAR, newly renamed NASCAR Canada Series for 2024. Now, obviously, the NASCAR Canada Series uh, presented by Pinties and Aviram is close to my heart. That was the previous focus of this show. Uh, but we're we're going to look at uh, the 2024 championship. And, and it's going to be one of change. The big one uh, and big noticeable omission from 2023 to 2024 is going to be last year's champion, Trayton Lapsovich, who is not going to be returning, at least on a full-time basis. If he comes in and does a start or two, that would be great. But he has a big, big opportunity in the Cars Tour with All Rem Racing and Chad Bryant. Uh, he's got the Bare Knuckle uh, Fighting Championship and a Virum on his uh, number 77 uh, Pro Late model. And for him to be a part of something like the Cars Tour is huge, not just for, for Trayton Lapsovich and for the Lapsovich family, but for the entirety of racing in the NASCAR Canada Series that our previous uh, champion is getting an opportunity. You see the names listed here. A lot of these are returning names. Uh, we did have some further confirmations we'll talk to we'll talk about. Glenn Styers in the zero will be back under his own banner this year, the GSR banner. They're going to do their own team. They've separated from White Motorsports. In fact, White Motorsports right now not looking like they're going to field a car in the series in 2024. DJ Kennington is somebody you always have to watch anytime you are watching a NASCAR Canada Series race, the Castrol Dodge for 2024. Uh, bit of a different look, of course, rebranding uh, with Castrol's got their new logo design. Uh, so that's what they, they followed up with. Uh, 17's got a little bit of a different look this year than it did last year. So one and done for that paint scheme. Brandon McFarlane, and Josh Collins Racing are planning to be back. To be back, likely just going to do ovals. Uh, Steve Cote, I was told it's Steve, not Stephen Cote. He's going to do a full season. The rookie uh, is going to be in for All Rem Racing in the number twenty nine Chevrolet, and uh, that's as well with the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship and with the Virum on the side. Now the big question mark is what happens with the twenty four. Well, the 24 last year, Thomas Nova had Aviram as a big partner on his car. So we'll be very curious to see what happens with him in 2024. Uh, Daniel Ball back in the 31. Simone Dion Vienne in the 37. LP Dumoulin revealed his car at Motorama. He'll be back for the full season. Raphael Lassard in the number 48 will do four races in Quebec. Herbie Drescher will do the road course races in 2024. Dave Corsall will do all of the Quebec races. Josh Collins is back. He'll do likely the ovals as well. David Thorndike, you're likely to see him at CTMP. Kevin Lacroix in the Napa Auto Parts Dodge for 24, uh, separated from championship crew chief uh, or champion crew chief, champion championship driver. I don't know if he's won the championship as a as a crew chief, but uh, Don Thompson Jr. Uh, moving on from the 74, it will be uh, Kevin Lacroix back. Uh, in under the Innovation Motorsports banner. And then the big news, Donald Teej and Alex Tagliani combining forces, uh, Alex moving on from 22 Racing to be part uh, of the field. Only half a uh, season, though, only doing the road courses for him. Donald Teej will do the ovals, but that should be a very fast team. That will be a full-time car, however, this year, so they'll be a bit of a change there. Now, I put number 81 and number 98 here. However, uh, those are intermittent and might not be the exact numbers that these drivers are going to use. Dale Timmers and Malcolm Strawn were there as part of the autograph session for the NASCAR Canada Series at Motorama. Uh, they are the drivers that I believe working on partnerships uh, to be part of Jim Bray Racing or Jim Bray Autosport in 2024. The big news uh, for Jim Bray Autosport, though, they are switching to Ford Mustangs 
in 2024. This should be, if Jim, if Jim Bray is switching to a Ford, Dave Jacobs is in a Ford, you're going to only have right now, as of right now, though, there's only two uh, Ford teams in the NASCAR Canada Series. So we're going to try and get a couple more names in there. Larry Jackson was also there. I'm not sure what the plans are for Larry, what the schedule is going to look like for him in 24. Uh, he has done full-time the last couple of seasons, but uh, not sure if that's going to happen uh, for this year. Fellows McGraw Racing is back with Sam Fellows. He'll try and do the road courses for 24. Mark Antoine Cameron Paye Racing back for the full season. Maxime Gouvreau, he's going to do two oval races out in Quebec in the number 97. Uh, that number could also be changed. That was not a final number for them. Um, Matthew Skinnell always typically runs some of the road courses. And then Mark Dilley is also back now. I believe it's going to be the number 64, or maybe he's going to switch it up. But uh, a big clue in this past week was a possible partnership with EHR with Mark Dilley. Why? Because Jason Hathaway is back in the number three for 2024. He is coming out of a retirement again to drive the EHR number three. Really exciting stuff. He's got a partnership clearly with Asa Abloy being on the hood of the car once again. And um, Jason Hathaway will also have Leland on the car, which is really exciting stuff. However, that partnership with Leland makes me think that that will be meaning that in some capacity, Mark Dilley would be driving for EHR. I can't imagine that Leland would do any sort of leaving of Mark Dilley. Uh, he has been a part of NTN and with specifically Leland for years. I can't imagine that he's going to go out. Um, he talked to him at Motorama and he said that he's he'd like to do a couple this year and then retire. Um, as one of my favorites, I really hope, you know, we don't see the end of Mark Dillon. I hope he runs maybe some local stuff. Um, but, uh, it's been an honor to see him and, and to know the driver that he is. And, you know, it's, it, I got to see that number 64 NTN bearings, uh, Dodge, um, intrepid way back in 2003. And it was, it was an honor to see it back then to see the 64 out there at any time is, is, is wicked. And to have Jason Hathaway as well was my, my other favorite in the NASCAR Canada series. Got a lot of favorites from there, but, uh, it's going to be really uh, great to see some of the returning names from Ontario this year. I think there was a lot of concern, um, especially with Trayton Lapsovich leaving. Jason Hathaway, Mark Dilley, that kind of makes it uh, a little bit better. Hopefully those guys have great seasons uh, in the races that they do. I, I just want to see a Jason Hathaway win. Uh, it's it's definitely... Um, he's definitely somebody that I've... Uh, always loved i've loved the number three ehr car so definitely really exciting to see that uh, they're going to be back this year but one thing that we are working on is trying to model a little bit of the oss on the nascar canada model and the oss in 2024 we're also uh we're working hard i mean obviously there's some stuff that we we have to clear up um there's some things that we want to make sure um get handled and and that we can improve on for 2024 uh let's take a look at the oss racers that we've got so far uh the o2 brendan patrick now he's somebody you got to watch a young kid now he he did move his way to winning last year but uh, for a guy that didn't have a sniff of the front of the field previous to that uh he had a fantastic season last year fourth and points with a win and pull at peter rose speedway chad mcglynn is back and you can never count the professor out chad mcglynn Right now, um, by my calculations, and they could be in a little bit off, but by my calculations, he and Bob Merrifield are the longest tenured competitors in the Ontario Sportsman Series history. And he's back once again. Michael Herniak Jr., he's actually starting to get up there in terms of the amount of starts that he has. Uh, 40 starts right now, it looks like, for Michael Herniak Jr., dating back to 2018. Mind you, a lot of the championships that we've had recently um, since that time that's cutting out the 2020 season. We didn't have a championship. Six races in 21. Now we're up to 10 races each season. So 10, 10, 10, all of a sudden they they, they do uh, they do send, tend to, to get a little bit um, tuned up. 
Uh, 17, we expect to see uh, Chris Shera back in the number 17 uh, Intrepid next year. Kevin Trevlin is back in the 19 once again. Laura Othier is going to make her full season debut this year and the first female to run full-time in the OSS since Amanda Connolly, now Amanda Balson. Uh, and that's uh, quite a ways ago that, since that happened. So uh, big news for her. Brad Robinson back in number 44 and... Sean Mangin in the number 47 Brimstone Games Dodge. He'll be back. Doug Cathcart. We expect to see Doug. Uh, Doug's is also up there. He's got 70 starts in the Ontario Sportsman Series. 7-0. So he is, uh, and that, if you think about it, the one thing about the series that I think people need to remember as well, uh, the championship for OSS uh, varied. Uh, used to be a matter of uh, seven race weekends. You do 250 lap features. Um, so be 14 races total. The other times, though, it would be five races or six races. It'd be much, much smaller of a series. Um, so now we're up to 10 races each. Uh, it looks like we're going to see Doug Cathcart back for uh, at least half of those races. Ollie Ferguson, whose car has been featured on the screen and was our intro driver today in the beautiful number 55, he will be back for a full season this year. Again, Corey McAllister. He will be back for a full season in his brand new Ford Mustang. Nathaniel Greenway, he is also going to be making his debut in an Avenger for Trevco Motorsports in a, a combination effort. Greenway Racing, Inc., powered by Trevco. So exciting stuff out there for him. We expect to see maybe Tim Bourne, Derek McCullough as well. Um, we're hoping to see a couple more new entries. Uh, that's the one thing that the OSS is, is trying to work on, is trying to get some... Some new faces out there. Potentially we'll see Mark Patrick, Caden Patrick out there. Uh, unfortunately, it does sound like we won't see the, the Black Magic Racing uh, number three this year. Um, unfortunate uh, situation there. But, uh, you know, we'd always welcome back uh, the, the number three and uh, Tim Tolton at any time, whenever uh, that's possible. Um, so uh, OSS looking very good for this year. Uh, again, we're continuing to work on stuff. Uh, for 24, Canon Midget Series. Now, undoubtedly, there's going to be some more names here. I will admit um, that I don't have as many connections uh, to the Canon Midget Series. So a lot of this is uh, by word of mouth and uh, simply by having their cars out. Uh, Jeff Blackburn um, got some confirmation from... Uh, Eric Wagner, uh, who actually met at, uh, saw him at Motor M. He wasn't actually there for the show, but uh, Eric Wagner is confirming that, uh, oops, Eric Wagner is confirming that Jeff Blackburn in the BD's car is back for the championship this year. Daniel Hahn and Corey Woodham. We don't expect full season for Corey Woodham, the 55. James Stanley also raced down in Florida, so we can expect to see him as well. I would think Dominique Smith, Smith will see as well. Uh, Dominique raced as well in Florida at Auburndale. So I think we can expect to see them as well. So the Canada Midgets always have a lot going on. Uh, one name we don't expect, Junior Farley, who's committed already to a Schwiegel Racing and APC Late Model Racing, so potentially not going to be in uh, racing the Canada Midgets in 2024. Uh, needs a bit more confirmation from people out in the, the Canada Midgets as to who is going to be in or out in 2024 um but again it is a series that i'm just not as familiar with so i'm um, gonna try and continue to, to learn and and build on it but uh, i'm a little more familiar with the outlaw midget series and there we've got some confirmations already dave bradley uh, we don't expect a full season unfortunately for dave it's when he can race uh mikey homewood jason metcalf i know it jason's he's itching to get going uh it has been uh, it's been a while for jason um, but he's ready to get going and, and get racing. Uh, Mike Bradley, last year's champion. Uh, Russ, I uh, spoke to Russ at Motorama, and he has confirmed that Mike and, and Dave will will be back. Uh, 55, Fred Homewood is also going to be back. And uh, talked as well with Kevin Spees at uh, Motorama. He and Nick will be uh, back racing in the Outlaw Midgets in 2024. And, I mean, we talked with Russ uh, who's in charge of the series and the Outlaw Midgets, and, and he has said that there's some other names they're talking about, uh, some some new names potentially coming in, and how can you not be okay with that? That's that's great to hear. Uh, the more and more new coming in is is good. 
Um, I'm hoping that will be some some other names that maybe weren't uh, uh, weren't thinking of coming back that that will that will. Um, but uh, for right now, those are our midget classes. And again, I'd I'd love to do a bit more on them. It's just a, it's again, it's not as familiar of a class for me. Um, but we're going to continue to 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 do more here on On Track Weekly, um, featuring as many different series and, and covering as much as we can. Uh, we continue on with the uh, Ontario Legend series. Now, this has been a a a renamed uh, division. For 2024 um, and for this year I mean Robin Youngins come in and uh, on the Ontario legend side and they're working with the outhouses in um, in really a, a good capacity what I what I really want and what is good to hear is series working together. And the more that we can have that, we don't want to be taking away from any division. That's absolutely true. Uh, you don't want to be taking away from uh, taking an audience away from anybody. Not in this day and age. You really want to have as many people tuned in and watching the product as possible. But I really loved hearing from Robin. And actually... We'll talk about the, the race director for the Great Lakes Legends, but um, I really liked hearing from both of them and, and hearing how they want to work together and, and they're going to have combination efforts. It is, it's good to hear the fact that Sunset and, and Oscar came together to put together the Sunset versus Oscar. I think that's a great idea too. Um, working Sunset, working with Oscar to try and limit the amount of um, conflicts for the Modifieds that is what you want to hear. You don't want to have tracks fighting each other for people to be at their track. I mean, it's it's a terrible thing that we have too many racers and too many tracks that don't get enough love. We're trying to show as much as we can, but uh, fighting against one another is never going to work. It, it doesn't help anybody in the end and and the fact that we have uh, racing series that are going to work together this year is great and i hope it continues um we continue on with our on our, our legend series here um you got your ontario legends so far Haley mcnichol um uh, keaton pipe uh matt boys and robbie sykes has already been announced to be part of the competition this year in the ontario legends Expect that you're going to say, like, so some, just to clarity, some of these names that we see on the Great Lakes Legends, they will be in Ontario Legend sanctioned events. Uh, it just is a matter of defining both rosters for right now. So these two will come together for events. However, right now we've kind of separated them into two rosters. Expect to see maybe the 51 of Cole Camrath will have an attempt or two with the on, on, Ontario Legends here. It's going to be local to the Sauble legends but i wouldn't be shocked if cole gets an opportunity in races in one of the big events likely maybe one at sauble with the ontario legends and great lakes coming together the great lakes legends again that's a series that has confirmed that they are going to go back on the dirt they're going to go to southern ontario motor speedway this year they're also going to go down south to flat rock michigan as well so great lakes doing some amazing things bob bailey Haley mcnichol mckenna robson austin arnell Smoke and Joe Adams and Zach Hatch so far uh, have been names that we have confirmed or have announced that they are going to be back. Other things to pay attention to. Great Lakes Legends has made a move in this offseason to bring in a longtime racer, familiar name to a lot of people in motorsports, as a new race director. And that is Jennifer Hatch. Uh, Jennifer Hatch is, is going to be their new race director for... Uh, the year she said she's excited she's going to work with uh robin and 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 really being put in a position where um not a lot of women have been able to do i mean we we, we can talk about some some of the big names uh specifically sherry putnam with the nascar canada series sherry was in charge of the uh, as race director for many many series uh, many many seasons now i'm not sure if she did the races per se but she was the series director so lots of uh, importance there and uh, very excited for Jen to get this opportunity and, and Jen's talked about how excited she is 
and uh, and working with Robin, working with the entire team at, with the Great Lakes Legends. That's great. And I just saw Andy Kamrath's comment there. Uh, OSS has gained, definitely gained some momentum the last couple of years. Uh, we're trying, buddy. It, it, it does. Um, we, we still have to work on some things, though. I mean, I think that there's, there's uh, methods that we want to go about uh, that I'd like to try and, and change. Um, a way that maybe some of the perception has been. We had some stuff happen last year that I, I we would have preferred not happen that way and um uh but i think at the end of the day uh what we want is a series that utilizes stock cars across ontario uh utilizes those old cast car cars old pinties cars um and doesn't break the bank and that's the hope uh that's definitely the hope out there so to wrap up our tour is the uh, out super late model series and the super late model series um, Glenn Watson I mean I don't know how you can go out there and defeat this man um, but the field is looking really good J.R. Fitzpatrick and Sean Chen with Paul Sr. Uh, that's who I have so far. There is likely a lot more that they, they can confirm, like Thane Halliburton or Ethan Corrier and um, Gary McLean. However, I, I, I again, it's all about connections. And if you know people in the series, um, definitely that would be helpful um, to confirm those names. But again, the other thing that I don't want to do here is I don't want to be stepping on people's announcements. If, if they're going to make announcements, you know, if people volunteer the information that's different but i'm not going to go out there and try and find out uh, if somebody is going to and then post without their permission i mean it's just it's not it's not what you want to do um we've we've got we, we're trying to with this show and with our, our podcast and the podcasting world i think what we're trying to do is keep the focus on racing all season long because the reality is is we face a losing battle each and every year once the racing stops people forget about it and we need partnerships to be worth what they are um and that's what we're hoping for not just for myself uh but for a lot of the divisions the apc series the nascar canada series all these series that we've talked about on the show tonight is is what we want so uh, we want to be able to fill the stands each and every week be able to fill um the cars and have lots of decals on them don't have blank cars don't have two or three showing up um i think when you when we see when marketing and promoting is done in a very very positive way uh and constant you see that the interest is there that the crowds show up but not just the crowds, the entries show up as well. And uh, we want to continue to see that. Um, I think that there's a changing of the guards as well. There's been some names that have come in uh, that have changed some stuff. We're going to see some more changes. We see it at Sobel Speedway. We've seen it at Peterborough. You see it at, uh, at definitely at Sunset Speedway and uh, OSS, NASCAR Canada, APC changes all over the place and we're excited to see what this new season brings us but we're going to wrap early tonight here on the on track weekly with cam k um we we haven't had a, a huge crowd tonight but for those that have tuned in tonight i want to say thank you um we're definitely going to have lesser crowds when it gets warm out uh, lots of people out in the garage working on their their rides for 2024 lots of people going to the racetrack lots of people prepping um, and being out and enjoying the time that they have before racing season starts however we will be here with you all race season long and into the off season hopefully we'll try and bring you whatever results we can um, the likelihood is it will be off of race monitor i know that's not as reliable as we would hope but unfortunately a lot of the tracks a lot of the divisions don't have results fully official for a couple of days. So 
Um, NASCAR is a little bit different. APC is a little bit different, but normally the track divisions, those typically take a, a little bit of time. So we want to try and, and cover a track each week, um, try and cover a division if possible. And maybe if we can just cover um, people who won. But um, I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. I had a couple of people, uh, Brandon, Terry, Kevin, uh, Andrew, um, Calvin, Josh, who all tuned in tonight. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, we, we look forward to having everybody back here uh, next week. Uh, we'll go over Grand Bend Speedway. Uh, we'll take a look at their stuff from last year. And um, have yourselves a great night, everybody. Enjoy the warm weather. We are almost there one month to go until racing begins. And, uh, man, here on On Track Weekly, we are ready, ready, ready to get going. Have yourselves a great night, everybody. Make sure you stay tuned to GeForce TV all week long. Race Rivals, Race Chat with Adam and Clinton. Subscribe and give us a thumbs up. That helps everybody in the algorithm. Have yourselves a great week, everybody. Stay uh, stay excited because racing's coming real soon. All right, everybody. On Track Weekly. Done.